गुड इवनिंग ऑल टुडे वी हैव विद अस एलेनास आर्किटेक्ट नचिकेत गर्गे ऑफ 2003 बैच एज आवर थर्ड स्पीकर ऑफ दिस वेबिनार सीरीज गुड इवनिंग नचिकेत एंड वेलकम टू दिस इंटरनेशनल वेबिनार बाय एलेनाय ऑफ एमएनसीओए फाइव डेज फाइव एलेनाय एंड फाइव इंटरनेशनल सिटीज इन स्पाइट ऑफ बिजी शेड्यूल्स वेरिंग टाइम जोन्स एंड अदर लॉजिस्टिकल चैलेंजेस नचिकेत ग्रेशियसली एक्सेप्टेड आवर इनविटेशन टू बिकम अ पार्ट ऑफ दिस इंटरकॉन्टिनेंटल वेबिनार सीरीज Thank you and welcome again, Nachiket. Nachiket Gurge has over 19 years of diverse experience in architecture and project management, on projects ranging from hospitality, airport, mixed-use developments, commercial, and residential. During these years, he has led, held senior roles in number of global practices in India and overseas. Growing up in a artistically rich family with a love for the arts and literature, where his grandfather was a famous writer and historian, mother is a trained Indian classical singer, and father an engineer and theatre actor. Nachiket grew interested in art creation and visual aesthetics. During his childhood years, he completed he competed in various art competitions and won several awards. his fascination with art grew stronger during the teenage years when he closely watched his uncle study architecture and felt the call to develop this interest further after completing his bachelor's degree in architecture in 2003 nachiket started his professional career as a junior architect with sanjay puri architects in mumbai where he worked on a number of commercial residential and shopping malls projects In 2005 he moved to the UAE and started working with WS Atkins and Partners the renowned international architecture and engineering firm behind Burj Al Arab and designed his first five star hotel project while working here he discovered his passion for designing commercial hospitality and services oriented projects rather than just residential projects spanning an overall professional career of 19 years he has held senior roles in variety of global practices including ws atkins and partners rapel vinoyan architects nord group consultants otak international and kila architectural design nachiket has extensive experience in projects ranging from hospitality airport institutional and mixed use developments currently working as design manager project manager with kila design he recently executed and handed over address beach resort a 77 storey twin tower mixed use development in dubai the project has two guinness book records to its name highest outdoor infinity pool and highest occupable sky bridge floor in the world In nineteen in two thousand nineteen, Nachiket was awarded Middle East Architect of the Year, runners up by Design Mena. Before we start this presentation, I request the audience to kindly put in questions in the chat box, and also we would like uh, we would be sharing feedback form in the chat box. Please fill out before the session ends. Over to you, Nachiket. Request you to start with your presentation. thank you madam thank you uh, for inviting me to give this presentation uh, to start with actually i would like to thank jadav sir principal principally madam uh, arti madam to give in, give me this opportunity to get get connected back to the college and to the students because it's been such a long time that i have never <laughs> interacted with students for some time now uh it's been a nostalgic uh, feeling for me because uh, i have been associated with the college for almost very long time since my childhood uh, because my, my grandfather was associated with the institution so i know i know the college for very long time but since the time i have moved out of pune i didn't get the chance so thank you very much to give me this chance to come back to college i still remember the college days when we used to do a lot of crazy things and in between we used to study a little bit but uh, yeah those those days were 
some of the best days of our life, uh, especially hosting this Zonal NASA, being part of the committee. Uh, I, I, I hope Sachin remembers that that we we were we had been we had done some crazy nights hosting that NASA. Uh, yeah, so thank you once again, and um, uh, I, I still miss the college, so I'll definitely come back once I'm there in Pune. Uh, I'm also happy to see that many of our professors who were teaching us are still there with you all students. So, so you, uh, I can assure you all are in the safe hands. Patil <laughs> uh, ma'am has given a quite a good extensive introduction of my work. Actually, I was going to give that. I was going to talk about it myself, but Madam has already covered that. <laughs> uh, but I will, I will, I will talk about it a bit more in detail. Uh, when when Patil ma'am and Sachin uh, reached out to me to give this seminar. Uh, I was really interested to do it, but because last time, last year when they approached me, I was, I had to, uh, I had to unfortunately decline it because I was too busy. So thank you, ma'am, for being patient and again giving me this chance this time. So I thought I, I shouldn't, I shouldn't miss it out. But again, there, when they told, uh, told me the tentative dates of when this webinar will be, uh, I was a bit skeptical again because I was traveling. I just uh, came back from South Africa a few days back and I was not sure how much I can prepare myself for the presentation. I have I have gathered as much information as I can and I uh, will try to convey my thoughts uh, and my uh, design journey as much as possible. So... Going back to the topic that I have, I have uh, chosen today, uh, hospitality and mixed use development. How, how, when I was contemplating how, what, what should I talk about? This, this topic came to me naturally in my head. And uh, to give you a brief as, as to why did I choose this topic? I will have to give you a, a bit of a history of whatever work I have done till now and. Uh, how did I get into hospitality projects? So I have, I've, I've, I'm the, I've passed out from college in 2003. And after passing out, I, I decided to go to work in Mumbai rather than in Pune because the reason being during our college days, during, uh, we had this internship in the fourth years. First semester, if I'm not wrong, yeah, fourth year, first semester. And during that time, I went to Mumbai to do the internship. I was uh, working with the uh, architect called Raja Adri. And uh, I was fascinated by the work culture in Mumbai. It's, it's, it's a very different work culture than we see in Pune, at least at that time. It was quite different than uh, now or what it was in Pune. Uh, people... Uh, are more professional, I feel. I thought uh, people are more, uh, the kind of projects that people were doing were, were quite uh, big, while commercial architecture, which, which actually I was drawn into. Um, so once I finished my college, yes, I, Mumbai was always in my head. So uh, immediately after Pass out of or uh, passing out of the college, I went to Mumbai and started working with the uh, architect called Sanjay Puri. For two two and a half years, I was working there, and I really and I got to work on some really good projects like multiplexes, shopping malls, and they were quite huge. And all over the India, he was designing projects. So rather than just doing residential buildings, I was directly thrown into this commercial part of the architecture I re and that that really actually I was liking that kind of architecture so for two and a half years I worked there and then my once once when I had come back to Pune on the weekend my father sat with me and asked me 
what's next for you? Are you going to still continue there? Is there anything else in your mind? Uh, and I was like, yeah, I would still like to work here. I'm, I'm doing good. But then he also sh- discussed with me that apart from Mumbai, there is another world out there. Why don't you explore it? And uh, first thing I told him that I don't want to study anything more because uh, usually people go out for studies and then they start working later on. And I didn't, I didn't have that inclination to go and study. So he said, no, there's other, other ways you can go out and explore the world out. So I started exploring which are the, what are the ways I can go out and start working, which are all other places to go. And uh, Dubai was one of that, one of the shortlisted places because I was reading and I researching everything. There was Singapore in my head, there was Dubai, there was London, but uh, in Dubai, I had some connections like uh, my, my uh, batchmate, Krishna Kumar Nair was here who gave me some insights. There were some uh, other friends who also uh, helped me to understand what Dubai is and what they are doing. Uh, so I said, yes, let's try this. Let's do go to Dubai. And uh, in 2006, I landed in Dubai. I just packed up my bags. I didn't have anything in my hand. I just packed my bags. My father said, go go for two months, explore. If you find a job, do a job. Otherwise, come back. Think of it like a vacation and come back. So I landed in Dubai in 2006. And it's funny, actually. I landed, I went to my hotel room, I kept my bag, and I I came down to have some tea or anything. On, And I was standing out also the, in the, on the road. And suddenly I see someone walking towards me. And I'm like, I know this face. Who is this? And that was Sachin Maman there. And that was <laughs> Sachin. I hope you remember that. So uh, that was another association from MMCA, which never left me. That he was another uh, good uh, connection that I developed there. So I started looking out for jobs there. I went. Day and night, I was going from one office to other office. And I was lucky to get a chance in uh, WS Atkins, one of the, at that time, it was one of the uh, biggest architecture and engineering firm. And I started working in their Abu Dhabi office, not in Dubai office. Uh, There, I did... The first project that I was given was a five-star hotel itself. And I was like, I was completely clueless because it was such a massive project. And I had no clue what what goes into doing a five-star hotel. Not that I was alone. We had a whole team, but uh, it it was new to me. But slowly, steadily, I I learned the things I got to know all the uh, technical part of the design that has to be go that goes into this designing uh, for i was i was almost 8 9 months i was designing that hotel and during that process of designing i realized that this is this is something that i want to do because uh, it had, it had so many components in it to design. I mean, I had never done such a complex kind of project any time, not even in Mumbai. So I was really attracted towards such kind of project. After the, after the Hilton Hotel, I did one uh, airport design also, but uh, that was also a huge airport of Abu Dhabi extension, Abu Dhabi airport extension. But... Uh, But somehow I was still looking towards hotel projects and uh, that kind of projects to get into. So within within the next 18, 
uh, or till now, 19 years of experience, I have managed to design nine, four and five star hotels and mixed use developments, which is, uh, which is, which, which in my, from my perspective was what I always dreamt of. And I, I'd still try to get into such projects whenever I get a chance. Uh, currently, I'm working on another hotel come uh, mixed use development project coming up next to Burj Al Arab, which is uh, Jumeirah Hotel. And uh, it has super high luxury villas also. So, yeah, so this is, this is something I have always to uh, draw my passion into. So over the, over the next course of the presentation, I will try to show you a couple of projects that I have done and what exactly goes into designing such kind of uh, projects. Uh, what, I mean, we have always seen the good, good side of the uh, hotel, but there are, there's a lot of things that go on the hindsight and how those things need to be designed is, is, is uh, something that I will share with you. It, it's like solving a big puzzle. Uh, so I'll just share uh, my screen to sh show you what I'll go. Just give me a second. Okay, are you able to see? Yes, yes. Can you please uh, make it full screen? Yeah. Yes, thank you. Just a minute. Just give me a second, yeah. Yeah, okay. <laughs> So while designing a hotel, what are what are, what is what are, are the considerations that you give? Uh, uh, one of the one of the main main item that you think what what when when you design a hotel, uh, you have to always put yourself in the shoes of a visitor or a guest who comes to the hotel. So what what attracts a guest towards the hotel? Uh, first thing is the location. Uh, location of a hotel is very important in the way uh, whether the hotel is along the beach, along the or in the, in the middle of the city or next to a airport. That that will determine how how you will design the hotel. The the, the requirements of a resort is has is different than a, an, a a hotel that is next to that airport. For example, because you don't need all the amenities that are uh, in a resort type of hotel or a or a vacation type of hotel than in a, a air, next to an airport or in a city where more business related guests are coming. So that is the location. Second is the ambience. Uh, what kind of ambience are you looking for in a hotel? Is it is it a uh, more relaxed one or as I said more business people are coming in where there are they come in for one day or two day and they are leave their their main aim is to uh, work not to not to on a leisure uh, they, they don't come with the mentality of having a leisure time there so that that determines what kind of ambience you will create inside what kind of uh, interior design will you do uh, that is one and then another is another criteria is whether what star of the hotel is it it is a four star it is a five star uh, that also determines the kind of materials the kind of finishes that you give inside the hotel third thing is the accommodation how comfortable are the rooms? How how big are the rooms? Uh, that that also determines the design criteria of the hotel. Fourth thing is the amenities. Now the guests when guests book a hotel nowadays everyone 
goes on booking.com or on websites and just checks all the photos of hotels so and when families or uh, people are who are going for staying there as a as a tourist mainly in dubai people are more and more people are tourists from outside the countries there are like more than 200 nas- nationalities people come here so they always when they come here they look at all these amenities that are given in the hotels that 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 determines their decision to come to the hotel like whether it has a big swimming pool whether it has any kids play areas whether it has a beach or not these all these amenities also play a major role when de- uh, designing a hotel and uh, last but not the least how what kind of services are you giving in the hotel whether the staff is good whether the uh, food and beverage that the hotel gives is is of good quality so whether the security is good so all 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 and the housekeeping uh, facilities are good this also determines how how a guest will come to the hotel or not so this this all criteria needs to be considered when you design a hotel or a service apartment because service apartment is like an extension of a hotel it's 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 been uh, operated by the same hotel uh, as the hotel operator but it's just that the guests staying there are long term guests who have who have either bought that unit or they have been staying there for one year two year long term lease so yeah so when you start designing uh, any any project with the client what other thing i realized is is there it's not just the client and the contractor who is on board when you start designing there are 10 different kinds of stakeholders in the project and who are the stakeholders for which we have to consider each and every requirement from each of them to when you design and sometimes these requirements are conflicting with each other sometimes they are complementary to each other but you have to take into consideration all these uh, requirements from each one to start with first is the client the client can be a private owner or it can be a organization so each each type of uh, client if it is an organization then within the organization there are 10 different people then 10 different people will come up with their their own requirements uh, even if there is a basic theme or basic brief given within that brief also people have their own small small requirements so we have to comply with those too if it is a private single owner i i i face le- less problems it is better second one is the hotel operator itself uh, like the hilton the marriott so they have their own guidelines they have their own set uh, requirements uh, if it is a four star hotel they have their uh, requirements which are different than a five star hotel uh, the sizes of the rooms the Uh, amenities that need to be provided the number of guest rooms minimum that they require and within the operation uh, within the operator team there are sub division or sub sub departments which have their own requirements like the operations team the operations team is the is one of the main team uh, who who has to run the hotel so from a practical point of view they have they have a different uh, mindset that how how because the whole mindset of a operations team is to generate the revenue and how how best can be that uh, the revenue will be generated uh, is is what they look at and that that affects the planning of a of, of a hotel second is the engineering which is the backbone of the entire uh, hotel or service apartment uh, uh, building because without without the hvac which are without the electrical and uh, all these things so you you cannot run a hotel so they have their own requirements third is the security the security being a paramount one of the major aspect when you design a hotel uh, 
Yeah. Um, sorry, sorry about that. Uh, security, uh, yes, because people, there are sometimes hotel guests, VIP, VIP guests, or there are uh, large parties happening, 100 people coming and 200 people coming, 500 people coming. So in that, in that way, the security of a hotel becomes very, very important. So that is a factor that needs to be considered. Next is the marketing team. Marketing team has has to make make uh, the hotel look prettier on the website. So they come up with their own requirements. That I want I want like this area of uh, of the hotel to be uh, more prominent, or this uh, they want the uh, lobby to be pro of this particular size to come up with because they want to highlight it to the uh, the guests. Third part is the cost consultant who who is managing the cost for the entire project. So if if they see that the co project is costing more, then they try to value engineer many of the design elements. So that also affects how you whether you have already designed it or you are about to design. So that that also determines. Uh, how you will design it. Fourth is the project management team who is handling the entire uh, delivery of the project. Uh, look, so within the project management, you have the project managers, the planning managers. They determine, uh, they are looking after the overall planning, of, uh, uh, overall scope and the cost and the time has been managed and the hotel is delivered in time. So if, if, if it happens that the construction is going beyond the estimated time, then that has implications on the design because then they, they try to cut down on some things. They try to omit some things to be constructed. And yeah, that affects the overall design of the hotel. Thing, uh, fifth is our, us, the design consultants and the sub consultants. So within this, uh, within the sub-consultants, you have the structure team, you have the mechanical, electrical, plumbing team, uh, you have the landscape architects, you have the security team, and all, all interior designers, you uh, acoustical consultant team. So there's a lot big, there's a big team behind behind such big projects who who are designing in 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 collaboration. Next one is the contractor. The contractor is the one of the important guy who has who has to build your vision. So he has his own inputs. If if if, if it happens that the contractor is not able to uh, construct it in in, in time, or uh, if there is uh, like he has less manpower to do it, that that then has to be considered at the construction stage and. It affects the the way the quality of the hotel is has is achieved because if the contractor is not going to finish in time, he he tries to cut corners through the quality of the project, uh, and that also affects the overall uh, vision of what you had designed as a hot hotel, and then uh, it becomes a challenge to may control that. Yeah, so our contractor has subcontractors below it. The another main stakeholder, government authorities. There are there are at least in Dubai or in UAE when you design such kind of big projects, there are ten different government authorities that you have to go to to get the approvals on the project. Like there is main municipality, there is civil defense or the fire department who has their own set requirements which determine like corridor widths, the staircase widths, the kind of door hardware that has to go, the kind of facade that elements or the facade materials that you use. This all has been uh, part in part of civil defense codes, which needs to be followed when designing. Third is the electricity and water department, the telecommunication department, if your building is 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 a super high uh, I mean uh, 
high high super high structure and it falls within the aviation path then you have to go to the civil aviation department to get a to get their noc uh, that it is okay to have this height of a building and it doesn't affect their flight path and if it is a coastal uh, if it is a beach resort then you have to go to the coastal department to get their noc that you are not you are not affecting any marine life or uh, you are not affecting any any of the uh, uh what do you call this um, flora and fauna within the within the area last but not the least the road department the road department you need if if the hotel uh, is located within the if you say like example in the city center there is a traffic impact study that needs to be done to determine how many vehicles or cars are going to come into the hotel and how does it impact the main road uh, traffic uh, so that study has to be submitted to this department and get a nod from them that is whatever uh, parking facilities or the road design that you have done around your uh, building is acceptable then there are external uh, uh, some of the external stakeholders like retail operators or or the fnb operators if you you have restaurants within the uh, hotel these these uh, restaurants are sometimes leased out to external parties who run the who run them and uh, they have they come up with their own interior designer for example they come up with their own uh, concepts and you have to integrate that concepts into your design you have to design your structure according to it you have to design your mechanical electrical design according to it and, and last but not the least the end users for example if it's a service apartment this doesn't apply mainly to hot guest rooms but it applies for the service apartment users and residential users who are going to stay there permanently so they have they come up with their if they have decided to redo their own uh, unit interior design wise and they want some changes to be done inside it so they have they come up with their own uh, requirements which has to be accommodated within the design Th this this uh, this uh, requirement usually doesn't happen during the design stage but this happens when the construction is going on because at that time these guys visit the site they look look uh survey the whole unit and then they appoint some external for example a uh, interior designer to redo their work so during the construction stage we do have to consider their requirements which also affects the um, i i mean i had an example where they wanted to change one of the balconies and make them uh, integrated within the room but that would have affected my entire elevation so we of course we did not allow them to do it but but things like this come up and uh, we have to accommodate them so yeah service apartment and the residential one so so these are these are some of the stakeholders and the, each one of them affect how you design the building how you design the interiors and uh, as i said it's a it's it's a kind of a puzzle that you have to solve to by getting all these requirements into place and still see that your design vision is not lost next uh, so when you consider all these things uh, what are the what are the when you start designing which are the two main things that you you start looking at when designing a hotel there are two components to the hotel one is the front of house or the uh, areas that are uh, accessible to the guests or wherever guests moves around those are the front of house areas and uh, there are back of house areas which are not uh, visible to the guests but they are equally equally important for a successful running of a hotel so front of house areas which are the front of house areas the drop off area the drop off area is where the guest arrives 
uh, for the first time in a hotel and that gives the first impression of how the hotel will be or how the guest thinks the hotel will be that's the first look of the of the place the whole atmosphere that is there in in uh in that uh, development so it, it it has to be a very welcoming very uh, uh what do you call warm warm warmth having a very warm uh, feeling when you come in it, it, a guest shouldn't be feeling that oh where have i come here it doesn't give me a good vibe you know it has to be a very welcoming drop of area similarly you have the hotel lobby that is that is the first impression inside the building so you have to create that welcoming wow effect when you walk into the lobbies third is the f&b outlet some some guests come there just for dining or just to have some drink so your f&b outlets also need to be really impressive in terms of designing in terms of the interior design in terms of the uh, location also so it depends on how you uh, place the f&b in your planning if there's a good view outside you have to orient those uh restaurants uh towards that view you have to create outdoor seating indoor seating next is the big areas which is the ballroom or the banquet halls that where uh, you have bigger functions weddings happenings which are these this ballroom is one of the most uh revenue generating place so designing that also is is is, uh, is is quite interesting fifth but the business center where people have meeting rooms conventions this is more of a formal area of the hotel and la- last but not the least the guest rooms which which, which are like heart and soul of of uh, any hotel people or the guest should feel very comfortable and very at home when they when they come here and yes as i said earlier the amenities what kind of amenities is are you providing in the hotel swimming pool kids club gym spa all 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 these front of house spaces are needs to be considered when designing any any project <clears throat> this this is this was the front of house areas similarly we have the back of house areas which are equally important for successful running of a hotel first and the foremost the kitchen the kitchen is like a heart of of any hotel uh this, the 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 location of the kitchen should be such that uh it is it is of course disconnected from the main guest areas but it has to be equally connected with those areas from back end to uh, to serve them within the kitchen there are many sub areas like the cooking areas the preparation areas the cleaning areas uh, there is cold kitchen there is hot kitchen and all these areas have to talk to each other have to support in each other in the function of the of the hotel because guests look guests are looking at service and you have to make sure that your uh, for example the food is reaching the uh, restaurant or reaching the guest room and in in a in a very uh, uh, is reaching them in a very quick way but in a very efficient way and not hampering the front of house spaces second equally important is the mep rooms which is uh, like the where your air handling units your boiler rooms your fire water tanks electrical rooms are all located these are like veins and arteries of the hotel because if you don't have a good uh, mep service running in the hotel the guest will feel uncomfortable they will start complaining uh, so this these these 
these two are kitchen and MEP are one two of the most important factors to be designed properly for 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 for, for proper functioning of a hotel. Third is the loading and unloading areas. There is the hotel consumes a lot of resources on a daily basis. Like there are supplies for the food items, there are cooking items, there are housekeeping items which have to come in, go out on a daily basis, on sometimes even on an hourly basis. So you require a big area of in your layout to, for these trucks to come in and go out. So this is one of the area, one of the uh, factor, uh, one of the area that you have to factor in in your design. Fourth is similar to the resources. The resources uh, that the, the the hotel also produces a lot of garbage. That garbage has has to be taken out. Uh, there are huge garbage rooms that has been created uh, that needs to be created because the trucks have to come in every day. Uh, take out all the garbage and take it out. So, so the loading and the garbage rooms are are go side by side or together when uh, designing. Secure, as I said, security room. Security is one of the top important uh, requirements from the hotel operators. Uh, each, they have to monitor each and every corner of a, of the hotel. Uh, sometimes there are uh, VIP guests that comes into the hotel, and that that has so the service security level has to be uh, enhanced. So all these uh, requirements are considered in their security design, or uh, the cameras, the fire alarms, and all those things. Uh, next, but next is the laundry room. Same, uh, this part of laundry room is part of the uh, housekeeping function. So, uh, similar to the garbage, there is a lot of linen, there is a lot of uh, what do you call the daily. Uh, sorry, there's a lot of uh, bed sheets, pillows, uh, covers, and all these things which on a daily basis needs to be washed. Uh, same goes with the staff uniform there is there there are uh, for a five star hotel normally there are anything between 150 to 200 uh, staff members and they have their uh, uniforms which needs to be cleaned and washed every day so laundry also takes uh, quite a big uh, area of your back of house areas same for the staff areas, for you have you have to cater to the requirements of the staff in terms of you have staff cafeteria, you have the changing rooms, locker rooms, uh, which needs to be considered. Last but not the least, the store rooms. A lot of store rooms are required to uh, store any any additional uh, uh, requirements in the hotel, like you have to store your linen, you have to store your furniture. You have sometimes need to have store any other supplies, which so those store storerooms are scattered all over the development, or uh, catered to that. So I will run you now through uh, a couple of projects just to make you understand from these design perspectives. How, how this has been considered in my project. This is, this is the, so I'll start with this project, which I have recently handed over is the address beach resort, uh, which is at, at located at the, I know, I don't know how much you know about Dubai, but Jumeirah beach residences is one of the prime uh, locations in Dubai. And this is, uh, located at the end of that JBR. It's a mixed use development consi consisting of hotels, service apartments and residential units. A 77 story twin tower development having a total of 242,000 meters square of area. And uh, it has, it holds around 217 hotel keys, 445 branded apartments, 
and 478 residential apartments. Uh, the landscape is, is one of the important part of this development as it's, as it's a beach resort. So all the podium is, is a step podium with, with landscape all over and, uh, and swimming pools uh, in that integrated within the landscape. And as, as uh, Arti Madam told, this, this project has the highest infinity pool on the 77th floor. This uh, the project has been awarded Guinness Book of Records for two, two of its uh, important uh, design elements. One is the highest infinity pool in the world and the highest occupiable sky bridge. So if you see, this, this is the bridge that connects both the towers and this is at, at uh, 204 meters above the, above the uh, ground level. So it is, it is, it has got into the Guinness Book of Records for that. The concept, how the concept was developed for this. As I said, the, the hotel is located at the end of the JBR, uh, which is, a, which is the last plot on that, on that land. Uh, yeah, this, this is, so if you see, there's, there's nothing beyond it. It's the water canal and, and which gets connected to the sea. So how did we come up with the, with the concept for this uh, development? The brief that was given to us was to have just, uh, the brief was just to have a twin tower development. And then we started looking at, um, at the skyline of the of the whole JPR and how how can it be, you know, how can the tower be integrated within the within the whole skyline? Uh, so we we had a couple of options that we worked on, but uh, what what we thought about at the end was instead of instead of merging into the whole skyline, we we designed something which stands out rather than that. Uh, rather than merging into the whole thing. So, yeah, the other important thing to consider was to optimize the views from the hotel, from the tower. Uh, how can that be done? That was another, another uh, aspect to be considered. So we, this is this is how the skyline looked like or looks like at the JPR. And then at the end, at the end, we had to come up with some tower. We, we, we studied a lot of different shapes and sizes and uh, uh, depending on the sun path. And this is how we came at, at the end that we should have a twin tower, but with a, with something which stands out from the whole, whole skyline. So this, as I said, we, we did, did a studies on different shapes, sizes, orientation based, based on the views that the tower can give, the heat gain, the wind load. And, and we thought the ellipse shape is, is the most efficient shape because uh, it, it not only will give you the view, rounded view of all the sides, but it also helps with the uh, wind load and uh, uh, heat gain, uh, reducing the heat gain for the entire tower. We went one step ahead and created a volume of void in between, which added more views from the interiors of the, of the tower because we have uh, units on the interior face of this tower also, which so which provided the views, 360 degree views of the whole development are, and you can see the sea beyond, you can, there's Palm Jumeirah beyond the sea. So the whole view was, uh, was, was one of the prominent aspects. Uh, yeah, this is the view from the land side of the, uh, the developments. So from the land side also, you see that the building is stands out prominently and it doesn't merge with the whole uh, skyline. Zoning zoning was done in such a way that you have for uh, the 
the east and the west tower we we call it east and west tower the west tower was had first 16 floors as hotel apartment hotel floors above which there were 64 floors of service apartments uh, while the east tower had the entire tower for residential units uh, on the podium and the basement we have three basements in this uh, Uh, development catering to almost around thousand car parks because the units itself are thousand. So yeah, that was the requirement minimum requirement to be to have a thousand car parks. Um, apart from that, we have on the podium all the uh, drop off areas, the hotel lobby areas. Then we have the hotel uh, restaurants and back of house spaces. the kitchen all 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 in the body media on the sea side there is a there is a step landscape uh, this landscape was designed as something which peels off from the main tower and uh, and steps down slowly to the beach uh, and within that we also there were a swimming pool three different swimming pools integrated within those landscape one was the kids pool one is the family pool and the third is the adult pool so adult pool provides uh, where you can have long lap laps you can have laps of the swimming pool family pool is just for fun and then there was the kids pool apart from that we also had to pro- give uh, the residential tower had their own separate swimming pool well you cannot mix residential people with the hotel guests so all all the requirements what for hotel for example we had the spa we had the gym we had to, we also have the same uh, spaces been provided for the residential guests <clears throat> and within this landscape if you see the as you come from the beach towards the tower the whole uh, walkway is such designed that it goes through the whole uh, swimming pool area and there are steps leading you all the way from the beach towards the lobby of the hotel give it gives a very uh, resort kind of feeling to the to the entire uh, podium area so the, within the podium we also have created uh, some viewing areas or viewing decks where people do come specific, specifically to take some or like these are like instagram uh, points or the instagram locations where people come and can enjoy that uh, those uh, uh, people can take those photos so this there we, we created like a viewing platform can delivered out from the podium we looking right towards the uh, palm jumeirah and uh, same so same we had created another uh, outdoor sitting area within, which was a coffee lounge and and a similar sculpture in front of that so people used to stand here and take the photos there so these these vantage points are really important when you design a, a hotel because that also attracts the guests uh, if not if not uh, the uh, guests which are staying there but also the local guests who are work just for a coffee or just for a dinner or for lunch they also like to have when you have such things which are over and above the uh, basic requirements of a design uh, it really attracts the people to to these such things other important thing as i said was the drop off so we had created a, a huge canopy at the drop off and a, and a sculpture which gave uh, a welcoming look to the entire um, the entire uh, uh, development and uh, below this below this canopy they have you have three different entrances actually you have separate entrance for the hotel we had the in center on the left there is a separate entrance for the service apartment people and on the right you have a entrance for the residential so 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 these the circulations have been have been segregated uh, quite uh, efficiently so they do not cross cross with each other and on the right you can see this level 77 swimming pool which which uh, runs across the entire 
uh, almost the entire length of the tower. Uh, and I mean, this, this swimming pool has come out really amazing because the views from top are, are world class. I mean, I, I can't explain it to you now here, but <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, it's stunning from their top. So, uh, yeah, but, and also it was very, the, the project the is, is, has many other aspects, which are, which we did for the first time, actually, uh, the whole, whole structure has been designed in such a way that uh, each, each floor slab had to be, was, was constructed within six days. So there was a six to seven day cycle wherein each floor slab was casted. And this was possible due to, uh, due to the construction technology called as uh, jump form, wherein you just have the, uh, uh, you just have these, I, I will show you the picture, uh, uh, video now, wherein you can understand that, but, uh, the columns have a, a kind of, uh, how can I explain that? I'm not a, I'm not a uh, structure expert, but the whole uh, structure, you can, you can jump the whole structure up within six days and the whole slab can be casted. So it was a very fast uh, paced construction. Secondly, the loading on the, on the whole structure was uh, reduced by not having any block walls. We, we went with drywall partitions, which significantly reduced the load on the structure and, uh, and resulting in cost saving. <clears throat> also, as I said, the structure for the, for the top uh, swimming pool was, was a big challenge because uh, it had the whole building because of the height used to sway along or it sways because of the wind load and that created like a waves inside the swimming pool which is which is not a very desirable thing to have when you are sitting in the swimming pool so we had to come up with with new technique of what to do to avoid this so the whole we, we uh, separated the whole swimming pool from the main structure and it is lifted up by a few uh, millimeters from all three sides and so that it is it is separated out with with uh, from the main structure to avoid any any uh, movement affecting the swimming pool so that was that was a quite tricky because it runs along the entire from one tower to another tower other thing uh, challenging thing was to lift the bridge upper bridge because uh, uh, you, as you see it is it is a cantilevered bridge in the middle of that connects between the two towers uh, that was done by a method called strand jacking i can i can uh, i will share you a video just to un make you understand how that worked um shona can you can you please play that video yes yes in a bit The roof of the lower bridge. We are erecting part. Is it the? Is it? Uh, can you see? Can, we are sharing the screen. We are sharing the video. Uh, I I can see. You can see. Other Thank you. 
We are currently now on level 13, which is the roof of the lower bridge. We are erecting part of the upper bridge, which is at level 64, at this level. This is allowing us to assemble the bridge ahead of program. So the soffit of the facade, the cladding, all the steelwork can be assembled ahead of time and safely before we lift it up into position. It's probably the most riskiest activity on the whole project. We're lifting just over 600 tonnes in weight. The yellow frames here are what we call the wind arrestor frames. They serve two main functions. The first one being the temporary supports for the soffit and the assembly of the lower truss that we're going to be strand jacking. These are all fully temporary and welded and fixed to the main structure itself that will be removed after strand jacking. The second one then, they provide the tension for the wind arrestor cables as we're strand jacking. So there's a, a series of guide ropes, cables, that are tensioned and then help the guide of, of the strand jacking as it goes through between the towers. The lifting will be over a series of days. There's an initial lift off, after which we then monitor and assess and it waits in position. After everything's okay and checked, thumbs are up, the button gets pressed and we lift it. That will take a series of a couple of days to actually travel through the 200 meters up into the final position. The control room where we are now on level 65 is at optimum level because we can visually see the jacks as well. So we need to monitor those and constantly obviously monitor throughout the whole lifting operation. Okay, exactly. Please double check. All the jacks are linked up to a computer system and a monitoring software that monitors both the height and level of the bridge and also the pressure within each of those jacks. The jacks can operate simultaneously and they can also operate individually. So they can be manually adjusted to suit if the pressure, for example, is going up in one jack that may be locked off until the others then recalibrate and then the whole system is reset and we go again. Once we're in the final position, the jacks will be locked off um, and then there's a temporary bolted connection, has to be aligned and leveled, make sure it's in the exact position, and then we can get the clearance to then start welding the connections between the towers and the bridge itself. Once the welding is complete and fully done, we'll remove the temporary structures and the additional temporary supports will be then engaged, and then we'll be able to build the rest of the 12 floors of the bridge right the way to level 77, um, at which height we have a swimming pool on the roof. So yeah, it was it was a it was a very complicated method or. Uh, the way that the whole structure had to be lifted, we had to consider a lot of uh, aspects like the uh, the weather conditions mainly. Any any wind movement would have, we didn't have that much allowance between the two towers for it to go up. So we had to consider the uh, days where the winds was very less and it took us almost five days to lift the whole thing up. Uh, Nishir, you'll have to share your screen. Ah, okay. Now? Yes. Yes, we can see. Awesome. Okay, so that was that was the first project that I did. Then um, this is another project just to show you guys the another kind of uh, architecture style that we did. This is the Ritz Carlton Hotel and Resort, which was done in uh, Abu Dhabi. Uh, this is again a beach front uh, development. Uh, uh, 
the whole theme was around the venetian style of architecture uh, and we had uh, all the whole development developed around a water canal the, the the whole development has been divided into two three components actually the main the main hotel building is 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 a 10 uh, building uh, to, uh, sorry the 10 building central uh, development then we had around 85 chalets or villas around it one bedroom two bedroom villas and then there was a venetian village kind of uh, development which was done on the side and a spa building so this was a very very different kind of architecture that we did uh, uh, all the elements of the venetian style were used and uh, the whole 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 idea was to have to have it more central looking towards the uh, central swimming pool and the landscape areas again the uh, the requirements and as i said the requirements when you design such a big development are quite quite uh, complex the other cha challenge that i felt when designing this was we had designed the project the project was almost 60 percent into construction and the client decided to change the operator for the hotel it was jw married earlier and then they changed it to ritz carlton so as i was talking about the stakeholders so ritz carlton came up with their own requirements because it's it's a more uh, superior brand than jw marriott so we had to accommodate a lot of design changes when when we were about to hand over the project in like few months time we had to change uh, finishes we had to change some of the areas of the uh, um, public areas some area requirements because because ritz carlton needed them that, that's their standards so there's in that way it was a challenge but as a, as a design wise it was it was a, it was a beautiful uh, uh, way to get the venice kind of feeling in in abu dhabi this the the central swimming pool and the landscape area is actually facing uh, the grand mosque which is the biggest mosque in abu dhabi or it's the th i believe it's the third largest mo mosque in the world so the whole idea was to face towards the towards that mosque so if you see uh, the planning wise all all the public areas or all the retail areas were located on the ground floor uh, where you had direct access towards the outside garden whereas whereas the lobby area was elevated up to a ramp going up and then you had the uh, lobby in your so I, I'm just going to briefly go through this. I'm not going to go in detail because it's, I don't think I have that much time. Um, this is the Venetian village where, where the, similar to the Venice, we have created, we have created the plazas or the, or the courtyards with the swing uh, fountains in it with all the ground floor dedicated to the F and B outlets, restaurants, retail shops. And on the uh, first floor, well, all guest rooms. And this, the all the villas which are like one bedroom, two bedroom villas have been designed along around the landscape gardens and terraces. So, okay, so this is the last project I will show you, in, in, uh, which is again an address hotel, but it had a different context because it located at in the center of the city. So the so the design requirements was quite different, and it also had to cater not to uh, like a tourist much in terms of vacation, but to more of a business oriented people. So this is just this is again a seventy two story uh, tower uh, consisting of hotel guest rooms and service apartments, which is directly facing the Burj Khalifa just next to the Burj Khalifa and Dubai Mall. The zoning concept is pretty much similar to Jumeirah, uh, the Address Beach Resort, wherein on the podium level, we had all the stepped 
landscape and swimming pools while on the other side of the uh, podium was the drop off area and the tower was directly facing the burj khalifa so but but the the whole idea was to have it more for uh, business or semi business kind of people coming in rather than uh, than the tourist uh, or the families that's why that's why it was it had a very small uh, footprint and uh, more if you see the design of the aesthetics of it, it is more it is not more uh, for, it looks more formal Yeah, these are some of the construction photos. We had a twenty-seven meter high spire at the top of the of the tower, so, and this is purely aesthetical. Nothing, no function to it. This was all constructed. The spire was put in place by in pieces of five five meters uh, pieces. The podium is all unitized cur curtain wall system. So yeah, that's that's it from my side. I just wanted to share these some of the projects that I had done, and uh, any any questions? I'm open to it now. Yeah. So we have few questions in the chat box. Yes. 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 Hello, Machike, sir. I don't remember. Hi, hi, Sachin. First time this this happened to me back in Dubai after holidays. Yeah. <laughs> uh, we have a first question from uh, Big John, sir. He says, "Hi, Machike. Uh, I would like to know how you dealt. Sorry, one minute. How you dealt with joints between the towers and the bridge?" To take care of the earthquake forces, assuming that both the towers might act differently during an earthquake. Uh, yeah. Uh, so Abu Dhabi and, and Dubai is actually in in a very low, uh, what do you call it, low grade of earthquake zone, seismic seismic zone. But yes, we had to consider those uh, elements, and we have created like a we have a expansion joint between the two towers. Uh, and those expansion joints have been filled with foams, uh, expandable foams, which move. Uh, so, the, so it allows the each tower to move on its own. But at the same time, it also the whole building also works together, because I, I, you can see there is there is a, a bridge on top of it, which which is all also continuous. And and on the level seventy seven, there is a, a swimming pool which runs all on the top of it. So. Even if the each tower works differently, the whole building also works in tandem with the, each other. Your work really fascinated with the scale of your work. According to you, where do Indian architecture students stand at international level? compared to the students of other nations and does it affect work or job opportunities we get abroad especially in contemporary cities such as dubai and uh, i think he has asked two three questions also if not dubai which country you would have preferred to practice architecture wow uh, okay let me take one by one um First was uh, where do you stand as as, as Indian students, right? So, uh, in, at, in compared to international, you know. Well, I I I don't think I don't think Indian students are any any less than what uh, compared compared to other students. In fact, we, I I would even give a uh, uh, some percentage more weightage to our, us as Indian students. We it's not only just the creative side, but we are also quite uh hard working and sincere in com as compared what well, that is that is my experience <laughs> uh we are quite quite uh, creative also and we are quite uh, uh sincere and hard working so 
it really stands out for from other people how how we work uh in terms of opportunities opportunities are there everywhere i i, I don't i it's just that you have to find that right uh, uh you have to be there to find that right uh, opportunity you know, now the the world is changing so much that you cannot cannot say that okay we i am i'm a designer and i will be designing just the buildings you have to create those new opportunities people are now getting into metaverse they are designing buildings in the, in the metaverse so that's new new uh, avenue that has opened up so there are there are opportunities uh, on the saudi now saudi has opened a, uh, is opening a big time there are huge developments happening in saudi arabia uh it's like dubai what dubai was around 10 12 years back saudi is on that path so there are opportunities in saudi to come up there are opportunities in qatar if you stop talk about middle east but apart from middle east um i feel other countries are are more matured or they are all developed markets so even if you uh, try to find opportunities there you won't necessarily we get to work on some fascinating projects that we have here for sure yes uh, we have a uh, next question from asmita patwardhan uh, sir can you throw some light on how sustainability is considered in projects of this magnitude especially water management in this sites which are principally in an arid zone that's a good question um sustainability so as i said as one of the one of the important uh, uh stakeholder from the government perspective is this green uh, green or lead initiatives that we have to comply to there is there is a local code for which is similar to the lead ap called as safat uh, green building guidelines which uh, which which uh, gives you all the things that you have to comply with uh, in terms of providing a sustainable or uh, kind of development uh, which has this water management also uh, the for example the water that is used for landscape it, it's mainly used it's not the uh, water from directly from the sea but they have they they use it as a recycled water or the uh, what do you call they they process the uh, drain drain water and convert it into usable water and that is used for landscape so there is no new water that is drawn from the system or from the natural resources they they recycle the used water to uh, uh what do you call it? to provide it for the all the landscape similarly within the buildings there are uh, there are uh, regulations as to what should be the amount of water flow for each tap the what kind of uh, light bulbs should be used uh, nowadays everywhere led lights are used which helps a lot to reduce the um uh, electricity use uh, similarly that goes with the facade also the like gla- glazing that you are using for the facade is uh, the triple glazing or double glazing which massively reduces the heat gain and uh, that in in turn of uh, uh, reduces your uh, load on the hvac so these these regulations are in place and uh, people are or projects are designing around it yes it is indeed a very complex uh, design process uh, i have uh, in this continuation i have small question like you talked about in in de- in depth you talked about the stakeholder management firstly identifying the stakeholders and uh, dealing with them and, and uh, understanding their scope and the interdependency between different stakeholders uh, yes. you know, in general because uh, prithvi also asked uh, this question uh, just uh, some some time back uh, can you talk a little more about the uh, differential uh, scope or uh, architect scope that like, how it gets modified in the uh, projects of such large scale i mean uh, we have seen 
in in the past normally architect used to be the main driver of the project so does it really change his role or how he has to adopt to the practices in gulf countries um <clears throat> so still uh, architect is still the captain of the ship I, I, he is not lost that <laughs> title yet <laughs> uh, but as you said there are there are many factors that uh, come into play when designing such projects first of all uh, money is the biggest factor and uh, the client who is putting in the money has has to make sure you you as a designer has to make sure that he gets the returns back for whatever it, uh, he has put in it's, it's not a small money they, these projects that i have designed are like uh, 700000 800000 uh, million dollars projects so and, and that is one uh, aspect then there is a operator for such hotels which also has to make money uh, so they have you have to respect the things where even if even if there are things which you don't want to do sometimes uh as a designer or you feel now this this can be awarded but but sometimes it happens that you know you have to um respect those uh, requirements because they are all commercial driven uh and uh, you just have to live with that Uh, we have uh, i think comment from uh, vasanthi londe ma'am she says a wonderful presentation excellent projects done by you especially considering it's very challenging to design and actually successfully build curb structures wishing you all the best to continue creating landmark designs in future thank you thank you ma'am vasanthi ma'am uh, i have a question for you dedicate yes uh what is the most desired uh, skill that is required to become a successful project manager or according to your experience who oh, desired skills there's, there's there's no specific answer to this that there is a checklist to have to uh, to be a successful project manager i mean i didn't have uh, any um, formal education in project management i just did uh, my pmp certification that's it but the whole uh, requirements or what or what a project manager does i have just learned it through my experience working with the project managers on these projects and getting to know what how how do they look into the project from their perspective so uh, there there's no i i for myself i don't believe in that formal way of getting into learning of the project management i be, i think just with your experience and uh, working with them you 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 get that so what can uh, advice uh, as an alumni would you like to give to our students oh. i i i would just say that don't don't uh, uh, at this stage you shouldn't get uh, think about too much what you want to do at the next level just go with the flow because uh, have have something in your mind what you exactly want to do but but just don't get uh, bogged down with that just uh, follow what you are doing and because even if you plan now something things things are changing so things are so dynamic now in this world that even if you want to do something now or if you think of something now you might change your thinking when you are down the lane doing you are down the lane so uh, if you are really want to do act passionately the architecture yes go for it there is big scope around the world as i said the whole of middle east has a lot of lot of opportunities to do as an architect uh, or or there are other opportunities within architecture like uh, as i said there is uh, people are getting into metaverse now they they are doing uh, buildings or they are doing city planning in metaverse which is for me it's still i am i am a old school man i don't get that but people are doing that uh, there are there are uh, opportunities other than architecture you can get away from architecture there is uh, you can do as 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 uh, dhiraj has done dhiraj did a completely different kind of uh, 
field you can get into those kind of artistic fields so yeah i think you should not think too much now just go with the flow yes yeah uh, actually many of our students are now kind of in that phase that, you know uh, they have lot of international exposure and uh, they are many of them are even thinking that you know whether we should uh, uh, practice in india or we should go out and work outside outside india so i want to ask you the uh, like you know what are the differences in dynamics uh, of working in india and uh, outside in terms of culture in terms of you know uh, working practices or professional practices uh, from your experience of working in you know in dubai for so many years uh there is definitely a difference there is uh, can you briefly can you just explain to our students because yeah uh, so so as i said when i was when i was thinking uh, or when i was having this discussion with father with my father about what what's the next for me and he suggested that you should go out and explore and uh, that really uh, when i came to dubai the, dubai was like a is or still is a melting pot of cultures people from 200 250 different nationalities are here and we all are working together so you get to know so you get to know people from all over the world their their uh, mentality the the way they behave so so yes there is a lot of learning other than architecture itself that uh, i got to uh, know i met some really good friends with them uh and the working style here is is quite aggressive i would say it's it's not as as uh, uh, i wouldn't say lenient but as as lethargic but it india is also on that path but we we here work very very long hours very uh what do you call the uh, very fast paced i i am sure such in you you might be knowing it because for example this uh, jumeirah gate project uh, or so the so the address beach resort uh can you guess from right from excavation to handing over of the project with the excavation was like 20 meters down from right from that stage to handing over we finished the project in almost maximum 3 years so that that's that's the pace in which people work here yes i must say that it is you know more system driven it is highly organized yeah it is it is uh, the, the whole system is more yes you are correct it's it's, it's more professional it's more uh, systematic it, uh, uh, people are more aware of uh, all the um, what do you call when it comes to commercial part people are more aware of what has to be done i think you just talked uh, because some time that you have not really done any formal education uh, after architecture into project management or something you know or like thing because yes are uh, uh, designing and you are part of such a big team uh, from the stakeholder management you can clearly get to know that n number of people from n number of nationalities you have to work together so especially for students i would like to ask these questions uh, whether you will advise them to go for uh, higher education immediately after uh, doing architecture or practice in india outside india or at what stage you feel that you know they should i mean they should really study after architecture or is is it okay i mean your your opinion on this it's a very dangerous question you have asked me because <laughs> <laughs> i am i am i am i am not for education <laughs> i never did i never wanted to do that education after the pr so uh, i don't know how to answer this uh, if i say don't uh, don't do studies it will be it will be very wrong for me <laughs> to say that <laughs> yeah. but uh, yeah if, i mean as i said there are many many avenues it's not just that you have to do a march or or uh, urban design or in, there there are a lot many avenues there are a lot many other uh things that you can study uh, if you have that inclination like you have art direction you have commercial uh, graphic designing commercial designing uh, so all these other other allied uh, fields can be explored uh apart from uh, the practices that we just talked about uh, 
how how difficult or how is it easy it is to stay outside india with families and how to manage your personal life liking and personal life It's, it's it's easy once once you start living in that in that uh, any any country i mean it's not just here once even if you go out as a student to other country and start living there you get you get uh, accustomed to the whole uh, the way the uh, city or the country works and then you just just go with the the way the city works so it it's, it's just a matter of uh, blending in within the whole so- the system of the society and then it's 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 a it's a process but uh, it's it's not very difficult it's, it's you is very uh, practical to get into the whole system actually we have one question from darsh uh, i think it's in continuation uh, sir if we start earning sufficient amount of money after bhc so shall we proceed with a march <laughs> <laughs> again wrong see, this is how students this is how students many students are thinking these days you know yeah. and that's how uh, that's how practices evolve you know over the time <laughs> see i i would i would give my my example when i did my brch and i i i we started working immediately after the brch i was now i don't know what is sufficient amount of money according to <laughs> when when i started working i was making only 4000 rupees per month <laughs> started from there so uh, the question that whether sufficient amount of money and then go to mr i don't think there's a specific answer to this <laughs> that's that's how the students are you know thinking <laughs> <laughs> it's just that whether you if you want to do mr you go it it's it's, it's not uh, it's it shouldn't be related to how much you earn if you really want to learn something you can you have to go for it i think very well said you know uh, the mr is uh, not just related to the financial factor of it it's all about your you know yeah if you, if you feel like you want to study more if you are interested in uh, if you that that part of the special practical life of the uh, profession but study more then you should go for it yes yes i think very well said <laughs> yes uh, uh, i think uh, it's been really you know good talk and catching up with you after many many years and uh, i have i have personally witnessed your uh, journey uh during since college days and you know just happening to meet uh, in a country which is at that time connecting with the people was so very difficult and you know yeah yeah i remember each other and actually growing up together you know over the years it's been really fantastic journey and uh, i'm really proud of you nachiket yeah thank you thank you sir yeah, and uh, i would like to you know request arti ma'am to uh, deliver the vote of thanks thank you nachiket from my side Thank, thank you thank you so much thank you so much for such a remarkable presentation uh thank you for speaking to all of us about your experience we are grateful for your time and effort you to to share uh, with us your thoughts and experience thanks again